know. So I'm Joey Lovestrand. I'm a postdoctoral fellow at SOAS and uh, happy to be able to host these webinars today. Uh, so today we have with us Makoto Furumoto, who is a research associate at the Institute for Languages and Cultures of Asia and Africa as part of Tokyo University Foreign Studies, or TUFS, uh, where he's been working on uh, Swahili dialects of Tanzania. He's going to be presenting uh, to us today some of the results of his research. So Makoto, thank you for being willing to join us, even though it's late in the evening uh, there in Japan, even though mm -hmm. you're missing getting to watch part of the Japan-Germany World Cup game that's happening right now. Yeah. Uh, sorry, we didn't coordinate the schedules a little better in the beginning, uh, but we look forward to hearing uh, what you have to do to share about your research and be able to discuss that with you. So thank you very much for being here. Okay, Joy, thank you for the introduction and let me share my screen first. Okay, one minute, wait. Try to show long, long slide. Um, show present view. And uh, as I checked before, I hope you are not seeing my presenter view. That looks good. Okay, good. It's perfect. Okay, let me start. And as I say, I'm Makoto, I'm Makoto Furumoto, as Joy introduced. And uh, I belong to the institute called Ilka. And uh, Joy knew what this, I believe, has, how it, this. Uh, the, how's the actual name of the institute, but uh, I can't exp explain it in English. But uh, I belong to some institute of uh, uh, Tokyo University of Foreign Studies. And uh, I'm very happy to give a talk here today. And I'm very happy for you to come here. And maybe if I understand correctly, maybe this is my or uh, uh, first time to see everybody, every participant, if I understand correctly. Okay, and uh, as Joy introduced, I'm doing my field work in Zanzibar, Tanzania, and uh, working on the description of local Swahili dialects. And uh, this couple photo, which I took Zanzibar, is a photo of local festival. And uh, this festival is probably derived from the per Persian New Year celebration, I think, and it's it, which called uh, No Rules. And uh, in this festival, as you can see, people fight with each other using stems of banana leaves. Okay, anyway, so I'm starting my talk about Swahili dialects of Zanzibar. Okay. So, firstly, I would like to share some basic information of the Swahili dialects I'm working on. And my field, Zanzibar, is an uh, archipelago in Tanzania, including two main islands. Uh, one is called Unguja, and the another one is called Pemba. And this is Unguja, and this is Pemba. And a local dialect of Unguja Island called Kiunguja was used as a language of trade in the 80s and 90s century and spread widely across East Africa. And this dialect forms the basis of Southern Swahili. And in this talk, I would like to focus on not on, on this dialect, but on other Swahili dialects, which called uh, Kimakunduchi and Kitumbatu. And these dialects are also spoken on Unguja Island, this island. And in some previous studies, these two dialects are called as a rural dialect of Zanzibar. So I also following this I said, terminology and and uh, on Pemba, this island, on this island, there is a different dialect called Tipemba. And the Tipemba is not focused on this talk, but I will show some examples of Tipemba as well. And the Timakunduchi is spoken in the southeast uh, part of the Unguja island, so like these areas. 
And the Titumbatu is primarily spoken on the small island called Tumbatu. This is uh, Tumbatu Island. And the Timakunduchi and the Tipemba uh, Titumbatu are called Hikai and the Hikai respectively by the speakers. And uh, in some literatures, it's been noted that the word Kai, uh, the Makunduchi's name, is derived from uh, the word Kale, which means archaic. But I consider this etymology, the etymology is not correct. And probably, as some authors have suggested, Kai and Kae can be traced back to a protobank Kaya, which means home or village. And here I'm showing some lexical differences between Tiunguja and the two rural dialects of Swahili. And basically, I'm using the orthography of standard Swahili, but uh, some IPA letters are also used to transcribe some peculiar sounds. For example, uh, the initial letter of the Titun Bad Bab, which means come out, uh, the, uh, the, its initial letter represents a palatal lateral approximant. And this sound is peculiar, peculiar to Titun Batu, and as far as I know, it's not being described as appropriately by other authors. And uh, the uh, Makunduch and Titumbad verbs in A lacks their cognate in Tiunguja, but they can be traced back to Protobantu. So it's likely that uh, Timakunduchi and Titumbatu share part of their vocabulary not with Tiunguja, but with other Bantu languages. And uh, as for words in B, I would like to you see the difference in terms of length. And uh, the Tiunguja words are disyllabic, while most of the Kimakunduchi and the Kitumbat correspondence are monosyllabic. Uh, more, uh, more generally, Tiunguja differs from Kimakunduchi and Kitumbatu in that it lacks monosyllabic independent words. And, and uh, probably uh, this restriction of length of Kiunguja was is at, can be attributed to stress, which is obligatorily assigned on the pen arithmetic syllable. And if uh, as this generalization is correct, it can be expected that Timakunduchi and Kitumbatu lacks pen arithmetic stress. And for Timakunduchi in particular, this expectation is likely appropriate because it is well compatible with the results of acoustic analysis, which I carried out together with my colleague, Yasunori Takahashi. And uh, the prosodic feature of Titumbatu uh, so is still unclear. And uh, I'm wondering how I can correct data for acoustic analysis in Tumbatu. And because of the sociolinguistic situation in Tumbatu, it's more difficult to collect data in Tumbatu than in Makunduchi. And uh, as you already confirmed, uh, Timakunduchi and Tumbatu appears to be grouped together and can be differentiated from Tiunguja. More generally, uh, assuming a broad, broad division of the coastal Swahili dialects into northern and southern dialects, Timakunduchi and Tumbatu are categorized as southern Swahili. And uh, according to Derek Nas, Kiunguja is also categorized as Southern Swahili, but it resembles Northern Swahili, which is uh, spoken like coastal areas of uh, Northern Kenya or Somalia. And uh, probably the uh, ambivalent uh, classificatory st status of Kiunguja is probably attributable to immigrants who came to Zanzibar from Lam in the 19th century. And conceivably, Timakunduchi and Timbatu emerged, emerged on Unguja much earlier than Timunguja.
And uh, at present, Kimakunduchi and Kikunbatu are under some pressure from Kikunguja. However, it should be noted that Kimakunduchi is still actively used across the generations. And uh, in contrast, the situation in Tumbatu is uh, more complicated. And in my impression, in Tumbatu, men tend to mix the local variety with uh, Tiunguja, the more prestigious variety, while some women only speak Tumbatu. And so this is applicable to the women, the women and men in this picture as well. And the, this as a gap between uh, men, and men and women is probably due to the difference of mobility. On Tumbatu, men often go far to the sea for fishing or trade, and most women are engaged in farming and stay in the island. And in this talk, I would like to introduce two kinds of my findings. First, I will talk about language contact between Swahili dialects. And second, uh, I will show two traces of grammaticalization which appear in Kimakunduchi. And uh, uh, the man in this picture wearing the yellow shirts uh, is a Kimakunduchi speaker who provides the Kimakunduchi data I will show today. Okay, so firstly, I would like to talk about uh, like language contact or dialect, dialect contact within Swahili. Uh, so, more well, Concretely, I would like to talk about the observation which suggests the borrowing of a tense aspect marker into Tumbatu. So I prepared some examples to introduce basic information of tense aspect marking in Kitumbatu. These examples are all from tales narrated by, by a Kitumbatu native speaker, and they show that Kitumbatu has several ways to expre express anterior situations. For example, past tense can be encoded with the prefix li, uh, as in example one. And while this prefix has been borrowed from Kiunguja, this is not what I want to talk about today. And uh, example two and three show that for perfect and completed, the prefix is na and sha are used respectively. And when perfective, was, perfective is encoded, verbs lack a uh, term prefix and the same vowel as the penultimate syllable of the stem appears as a final vowel. And this morphological pattern is called vowel copy, and this is shown in example four. Uh, yes, it's four. And in this example, the penultimate vowel a is copied at the final vowel. So in general, verbs end with the final vowel a, uh, uh, as in one and two. But when vowel copy is applied, verbs end with can be end with other vowels like a in four. And uh, I realized this generalization is not applicable to verbs like faham in three. So this is because this verb is uh, uh, borrowed from Arabic and uh, some, some borrowed verbs uh, is how is it, not subject to any as a final vowel alternation. Here, uh, I would like you to recall that Tumbatu is a small island. And on Tumbatu, there are two villages. One is called Gomani, and the other is called Jongore. And uh, two villages are linked by a tiny road, which can be seen in this picture. And uh, 
while the, the languages in Gomani and Jango are very similar, but there is a variation. And for example, in Jango, where the prefix N, uh, which is the homo organic syllabic nasal, is used for anterior situation in addition to uh, the other strategy, strategies which I showed in the previous slide. So in five, uh, six, so the prefix N appears. And maybe this prefix is used for to, to encode perfective, I think. And uh, remarkably, uh, the syllabic nasal is used in a similar way in Kipemba. And this is shown in eight. And more precisely, Kipemba uses a prefix na for perfective, and this prefix can be reduced to the syllabic nasal in certain environments. Oh, oh. So in some, uh, my findings is that use of uh, the syllabic nasal in Kitumbatu and Kipemba. And I consider that the Kitumbatu has borrowed this prefix, which only appears in the variety of Jongoe and from Kipemba. And I'm wondering this borrowing corresponds to the movement of Tumbatu people, especially men who often go outside the island. And I know little about the similar case uh, of the similar borrowing with the exception, but with the exception of the prefix me, which came into Tima Kunduchi from Northern Swahili. And now I would like to move to the next topic. And uh, for grammaticalization, uh, I would like to talk about two traces which is observed in Kimakunduchi. One is a tense marker derived from the verb meaning come. And uh, the other one is a bound pronoun derived from the demonstrative. And in Kimakunduchi, the verb ja, which means come, can encode future tense in some context. And 9a is a typical uh, like where, uh, where exp expression, and it's a typical example in which ja marks future together with the imperfect prefix na. So, and uh, as can be seen in 9b, the future marker cha can appear in the same context. So, how is it? This, uh, so in other words, so 9b confirms the, how is it? Suggests that ja in 9a is used for future reference. And what is, how is it? remarkable is that uh, this uh, verb can encode futurity in isolation. And based on the cross-linguistic observation, it's been proposed that an imperfect component is essential for the grammaticalization of motion verbs into future markers. However, as can be seen in 10 or 10b. Uh, in Kimakunduchi, ja in isolation can encode futurity. So Kimakunduchi ja appears to cast doubt on the hypothesis about the grammaticalization of motion verbs into future markers. And uh, what is more remarkable is that Kimakunduchi ja covers past in addition to future. Past marking by ya can be seen example uh, 11. And uh, it should be noted that when ya is related to encode past tense, 
it can be followed by an unprefixed stem of other verbs as in uh, 11b. And, uh, and uh, additionally, it can be followed by the consecutive form of other verbs as in 11b prime. And uh, the formal difference of the following verbs correspond to the aspectual difference. When followed by an unprefixed stem, past perfective is encoded. And when followed by a consecutive, consecutive verb, past imperfective is encoded. And the, the last example in which ja is disjointed from a lexical verb is not worthy because it's used for imperfective situations, even though it's accompanied by the perfective prefix. And uh, as a perfective prefix never marks a per, uh, perfective aspect in this construction, it appears that the perfective marker has lost the original aspectual function and undergone functional change to the past tense marker with ya. Yeah. So, kimakunduchi ja, which means come, may be typologically rare because it's grammaticalized to cover both future and past. So, in my understanding, at least there is no similar cases in other languages. And uh, so, I think this finding may be significant, but I was more, how is it? interested in well I wanted to know more about whether two different functions are synchronically or diachronically related to each other. And I think a key observation is that Ja makes future reference without recourse to any support of co-occurring term markers such as imperfective now or conditional marker or subjunctive marker. And, uh, and in contrast to this, when uh, uh, it works to uh, mark past, it obligatorily requires perfective marker for it. It uh, obligatorily requires perfective markers. And based on these observations, I have concluded that future and the past uses of JAT can be located at different stages of the same grammaticalization processes, which is summarized here. Well, precisely, I consider that the first step is just the change from a motion verb to a future marker, which also marks future in isolation. And after this step, J has acquired the necessary but not su sufficient feature for past reference as a result of reanalysis of its future denoting function. And because of this, how is it, insufficient function, it requires a support of perfective markers. And in the final stage, ja and the co-occurring perfective marker lose uh, their semantic compositionality and then they are used. And because of this uh, lose, they are used for past imperfect situations. Okay, now this is, uh, I, I'd like to move to the last topic. And uh, the last topic is a demonstrative in Kimakunduchi. And uh, uh, as can be seen in this uh, table, Kimakunduchi exhibits a threefold distinction of the demonstrative. That is, there are protismal, medial, and distal demonstratives. And uh, the Protissimal and medial have monosyllabic contract, contracted forms in addition to disyllabic basic forms. And the Kimakunduch contracted demonstratives differ from uncontracted basic forms in that they can only be used pronominally but not adnominally. So in other words, Contracted demonstratives cannot uh, modify nouns. Can, yeah, cannot modify nouns. So this is shown in uh, 13. So basic forms like you know, 
can appear after the head noun and modify the noun. But contracted demonstrative like you cannot appear in the same uh, context. And notably, contracted demonstrators can be co-referential with pre-verbal noun phrases and contracted demonstratives can index any functions and semantic roles. So maybe, hmm? ah, yeah, yeah. So for example, so in this example, uh, the contracted demonstrative though correspond to the uh, uh, pre-verbal object, uh, which means uh, that story. And uh, yes, and what is uh, important is that uh, the referent uh, of contracted, contracted demonstratives are uh, obligatory uh, topics. And uh, in most bump to languages, verbs are accompanied by agreement markers referring to the subject or object. And the way of object indexing varies among bump to languages. In some languages, such as Kimakunduji, verbs can host the object marker only in the present position, while other languages allow it to appear after the verb. Uh, example 15 then shows that in the Shimaore dialect of Komorian, the recipient and the tame object of the ditransitive verb, ba, uh, which means give, can be indexed through the pre and post stem markers, respectively. And notably, such a post stem object, object marker appears similar to Kimakunduchi contract demonstratives. And what more, it's been proposed that demonstratives can gradually develop into anaphoric pronouns referring to topics and eventually become pronomia nominal or agreement markers. And against this background, I was wondering that Kimakunduchi contracted demonstratives can be located at an initial stage of the development into a post stem object marker. And Kimakunduchi is showing the kind of uh, missing in between stage of the grammaticalization of post object markers. Okay. Uh, let me conclude my talk. So in this talk, uh, I introduced part of linguistic features of Kimakunduchi and Kikumbad, which have been summarized as a rural dialect of Zanzibar. And I'm not sure if you enjoyed my talk, but I'm happy if you found that there is a, some interesting linguistic, linguistic variation in Zanzibar. And uh, for, uh, as for uh, the grammaticalization I showed today, I already written papers. So if you want to know more about them, please uh, get in touch with me. So that's it. Thank you for your patience. That's great. Thank you very much, Makoto. Uh, we've got plenty of time for some uh, discussion, some questions and responses. I know we have a few Swahili speakers in the, among the attendees uh, today. Uh, so we look forward to hearing your uh, comments as well. If you want to ask a question, you can either use the raise hand function in Zoom, and I'll uh, give you access to the microphone to ask your question, or you can put a question in the chat, and I can read it out for you. Uh, there was already one question that popped up from Nina Watson while you were discussing, and she's wondering if you could say more about the different uh, locations where you're collecting data. You mentioned it was more difficult to collect data on the island of Tumbatu. Could you say a bit more about that situation and what made it difficult? Uh, actually, uh, there are several reasons, and uh, one reason is that, uh, how is it? It's one reason is related, how can I say, so mindset of the Tumbat people. So, how is it? They, 
the, actually, Tumbatu is very closed place. So, so how is it? So, and it's very difficult for people from outside to, how to communicate with some local people, especially women. So this is one reason. And uh, secondary, so for example, in Makunduchi, people can, how to say, switch the, so they, they Makunduchi people can speak both Makunduchi and Kiyunguja, and they can uh, uh, switch these two varieties consciously. In contrast, on Tumbatu, it's difficult for people to switch languages. So, and, and if I ask them to pronounce some nouns or verbs, uh, they tend to pronounce the words in a more standard uh, manner, not in their natural way. That, this is the second reason. I hope you got the reason. Yeah, so just some complex diglossia and language yeah, yeah, yeah. making it difficult to elicit anything. Good. Um, uh, Lutz Martin is here. I would like to ask a question. Do you want to go ahead with your question, Lutz? Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Makoto. Really nice talk. Really interesting data. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, and I'm, I mean, one of the things which is really quite striking about it is what you have on your last slide as well, the, the link between language contacts and grammaticalization. And I was really curious, you know, what your, what your experience is about trying to find out what the relationship between the two is, because it's so difficult sometimes to disentangle what is called... Uh... Because also Actually, so, similar. So, so I, I mean, one one example, the example you had with the dia, the hmm. come, um, because you're right, it's quite striking that it's both past and future reference, but but of course the past reference is more widely widely spread. Ah, uh, so so, firstly, I have to note that like maybe the that, past reference you are thinking is different from the past reference uh, which appear in Makunduchi. So mm. in Makunduchi, uh, in addition to the uh, uh, past use I showed today, uh, it's used as a kind of uh, perfect marker in a similar way to uh, like for example, Tiyunguja. So maybe so, I think Makunduchi, the situation of Makunduchi should be different from, I would say, uh, uh, the situation in other dialects of Swahili, I think. And So were you able to find, you know, particular motivations for claiming that something was grammaticalized internal to the language versus being borrowed through language contact? Were there clear evidence that you used to make that distinction? Or did you have to kind of guess based on other patterns? Uh, huh? so, actually, so as for the, at least currently, I'm thinking that, uh, the, de I said, the development of our, our functional change of ja in Makunduchi is uh, independent of language contact. So it's not uh, influenced by any other languages. That's my opinion, but I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. Good, thank you. Thank you, Lutz, as well, for the question. Uh, there's another question in the chat from Amina Kamis. Uh, I think looking for some clarification about one of the examples. Do you have an example with the word Gamenapika? Uh, and you're wondering about tense markers may and na in this word. Do you know what that example is? Which one? I uh, cannot see the comment. Uh, uh, it should be in the chat. And uh, it's about Kemenapika is the word. And it says, looks like there's a tense marker may and na. Kemenapika. Okay. Hey. Okay, so 
I, I can imagine the example, but uh, I, I think this example, I, I didn't show this example in this, right? But it's... Yeah, Amina, maybe if you know the slide, that would be helpful to find it on this slide, but... But uh, I can say something about this because mm -hmm. uh, 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 how can I say so? Uh, actually, so in both Makunduchi and uh, Kitumbatu, uh, the prefix, uh, the perfect prefix ma or me can be combined with the prefix. Uh, imperfect prefix na, and uh, I'm uh, what I should say. So, and I I'm thinking that uh, so I, I'm not sure how I can how say uh, uh, how is it analyze or segment these two prefixes semantically, but I think they are, how say, they very look like, how say, uh, 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 how say, uh, the English construction, which uh, consists of, uh, uh, present perfect and uh, uh, progressive, like I've been working on. So, and uh, I'm thinking there are some semantic link, link between Swahili dialects and English. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> okay, so, so they're imperfective and perfect, but they are perfective and they combine for some kind of complex tense aspect. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, we're, we got some time for more questions, so feel free to raise your hand or put more questions in the chat. Uh, in the meantime, can I ask you about something on slide 19 where you showed your path of grammaticalization? And maybe I just uh, missed this, but uh, you say at the end that there's, you said about stage four, that uh, there's some evidence that these are now, that the perfective marker plus jaw has become non-compositional. Could you speak more about what the evidence is that that's become uh, a yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, so this stage is uh, so so in this talk I didn't show any how say examples which suggest the imperfective use of uh, or past imperfective use of the this construction. But actually, uh, when uh, Perfective marker and ja is followed by the consecutive verb as in this, I would say, uh, 11b prime. Uh, it expresses imperfective situations, but formally it's uh, accompanied by uh, the perfective prefix like li. So there is a gap between form and function, or form and aspect, and uh, and uh, I'm thinking this construction can be located at the final stage, stage four. So in this stage, so the perfect prefix has completely lost its original uh, aspects or aspectual function. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, so but then uh, the, in terms of the phonology and morphology, there's not any difference yet. There hasn't been any change in the so, form. So apparently, it appears the same as a stage three and a stage four, but uh, semantically, I think there are differences. Yeah, sure. And you you wouldn't try to uh, analyze jaw as like a non-present marker to try to do some sort of complex, you know, semantic analysis saying it's you know either past or future but not present. Actually, so when, so when I make these examples of the grammaticalization of this verb, I was wondering in a similar way, 
to you, but uh, I found uh, uh, and uh, I found uh, for future reference, Ja works in isolation, and then I changed my analysis and uh, actually so non-present uh, uh, function can be applicable only to I say past reference as in stage three. So, but I think I haven't answered your question. Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what the evidence would be for, for either analysis, you know, analyzing. Uh, okay, so, but uh, one point, uh, uh, important point is that uh, when uh, JA is used for past reference, it's always co occur with perfective markers, but not with other tense marker, tense aspect markers. That's why I'm thinking like this. So, I uh, saw, so, and because of this, I'm thinking, so, the label non-speech time may be not appropriate, but I'm thinking, uh, uh, how's it? Uh, I'm thinking, ja works together with co-occurring perfect markers. Mm. That's how I said. That how I said, central point of my, how I said, uh, my proposal, my analysis. Okay, so then Jot ja, ja does have this abstract meaning and is the perfective marker that clarifies when it's passed. Okay. Uh, I have another question from um, Amina. Amina, would you like to uh, ask your question if I can uh, unmute you? Okay, thanks. Thanks, Amina. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, I... I know this example as well, but uh, and uh, wait. So, so just for for those who are watching and maybe haven't seen the chat, uh, Kamina mentions that in another language, Kimakunduchi, they use the word hebu in a negative word, um, as in an example, hebu usumke avo, don't run away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you could comment on I, this. I, 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 now, for this comment, I'm I'm also seeing, and uh, I know this use of hebu, but. Uh, And for those who don't know, what's the etymology of hevu, or what does this word mean elsewhere? Uh, etymology, it's actually so. I was thinking about this, but uh, I forgot to fatu. I was thinking at that moment. So wait, hevu at he. Actually, so in Makunduchi or Tumbatu or in other direct, maybe uh, there is uh, the verb which is formally similar to have, have this. A negative word, but I'm not sure if there is a etymological link between them. So, and I can't say anything more about this. Good. Well, I don't see any more uh, questions or comments, so maybe we'll leave it there for now. And of course, uh, Makoto already shared his email address if anybody wants to reach out and discuss more or see more of the data. It'd be great to continue that uh, discussion in another uh, platform. Thank you to everyone for joining us and being part of the discussion. Thanks to you again, Makoto, for this research and sharing it with us today. I'm glad you were able to join us and I hope you enjoyed the uh, rest of the, the World Cup game. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you everyone.